Welcome to a video on energy. In this one we're going to be looking at forms of energy and uh, we really are used to understanding things when we can see it and when we can touch it and we can feel it. And we, we understand it because it's concrete to us. It makes sense. This is an apple. Well, it's a fake apple, but it looks like an apple. I can feel it. I understand this idea that it has mass and weight. But there's lots of things that we can't see and they're harder to uh, visualize what's going on. One of them is energy. So to define energy, what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. Makes a bit of a strange definition, but what is work? Well, work has the ability to make something move or to stop something move or to make something happen. So let's have a look here at a variety of samples. Let's just write down a definition. The ability to do work. We know that energy is measured in joules. And that has the symbol capital J. You might have heard kilojoules in terms of like the food that you eat. It has energy, stored energy, chemical energy. And that's measured in joules or kilojoules you probably heard. You probably heard of other forms of energy such as calories as well. So that's just another unit in which we can measure the amount of energy that, that uh, food has. So what are the different forms of energy? Well, there's lots of them. So let's have a look at them. First one, I guess we're all pretty familiar with the good old apple dropping on uh, Isaac Newton's head. Well, so the story goes anyway. This is gravity. Gravity pulls things down. So we can say that gravity has the ability to do work. Certainly if I was to uh, tie something to that, let's say I was to put it over a pulley and put a rope there, as I drop that, that will drop, pull the rope, the rope will then cause something to move. So it's obviously got some energy there and we call that gravitational potential energy. So write these down. We also have, this is, needs to be fixed, we also have energy such as this car here. You know, if we turn this on, it's going very slowly, batteries are running out, but you can see that I've got a battery in there, it's speeding up slowly, got a battery in there, and that is causing the wheels to move. So we've got stored energy there, chemical energy, causing the motor to move and that motor is attached to the axle and the wheels here and that cause, causes the car to move. So we have another form of energy. We have movement energy which we call kinetic energy. So we have kinetic energy, chemical energy, gravitational energy. Now there is a term called mechanical energy. Now mechanical energy is the, is the energy of a system either stored energy or it's energy in motion, kinetic energy. So we can say that mechanical energy is equal to, so that mechanical energy, all the energy within a particular system is equal to the stored energy, that is what we call the potential. I think I'm going to chuck that pen because it's not really writing very well. Let's try this pink, the potential energy plus the energy of movement, kinetic. And so potential energy plus kinetic energy. And so that's all the energy within the system called the mechanical energy. We've, said, we've seen so far gravitational potential energy, we see chemical potential energy, and kinetic energy is the energy of movement. So let's look at some other examples, and of course all these other examples you can classify as either potential or kinetic. Let's have a look at some of them now. All right, this good old chestnut, the good old Newton's cradle. We bring back a ball, we're lifting it up, so we're actually giving it some gravitational potential energy. And when we let that go, it turns into kinetic energy. Let's see what happens. And of course, if you hold it nice and still, it goes for a lot longer than that. So we've got a Newton's cradle there. We've got movement energy, kinetic energy, and we've got stored energy. When we lift it up, we're storing it because we're lifting it higher, giving it more gravitational potential energy. And of course, that energy gets transferred and makes sound. We have sound energy. Let's check another example of sound energy. Yeah. We've got a device here that's got this spring attached to it, and the spring is attached to a skin. And then we have air inside like a, cha um, a chamber there. So if I let the spring go, the spring vibrates, it makes the skin vibrate, then it makes the air vibrate, then that vibration of air hits your eardrum, makes your eardrum vibrate, and of course that signal, signal is sent in and we hear it as sound. 
Let's see what it sounds like. Could be loud, so if you listen to it with uh, headphones, just turn the sound down a fraction. Here we go. Now, if I stop the spring from vibrating, listen to what happens to the energy and therefore the sound. Ready? I stopped the spring vibrating. Because I stopped the spring vibrating, it stops the skin vibrating, which means there's no air. Well, there is air, but the air doesn't vibrate anymore, and therefore we don't hear any sound. So to make sound, we need vibrations. And so sound energy is the transfer of energy through air molecules, and we hear that. So that's sound energy. And because the air is moving, we could call that a type of kinetic energy. Let's check out another sound energy. Good old boom whackers. These here are tubes, hollow tubes, and they come in different lengths. And as you can see there, they've got uh, letters on them. And so um, these here make sound of different pitches based on the length of the tube. So the longer the tube, the lower the sound. The, higher the, the shorter the tube, the higher the sound. It's got to something that we call pitch and uh, we'll learn more about that as, uh, as the term goes on. Sound energy, tubes, pipes, let's check out another energy form. Okay, here we have a little Kermit the Frog, pet frog. He's a lot of toy that kids love to play with, but the cool thing about this one here is he's, if you put your fingers in the ends of his arms and you pull it back, you can see his arms are elasticated, which means as I'm pulling back, I'm actually putting energy I'm doing work, I'm doing work, and the work is going into the elastic, and so there's energy being stored in that elastic as elastic potential energy. Just like a rubber band. Rubber band is elastic potential energy. And so I can pull that back, and of course that has the ability to do work. If I let it go, you're gonna hear him, hear him as well as see him fly. There he goes, okay? making his noise. So that's elastic potential energy. Let's check out another energy form. All right, an oldie bit of goodie. These sometimes are called like jitter rings, um, kinetic rings, but what you do here is you hit them from the side and make them wobble. But they're wobbling only for a moment because they lose energy. Well, how do they lose energy? Well, they're making sound. And so as the sound is being made, the energy that the uh, little rings have gets less and less. And of course, there's a tiny little bit of friction in there as well. So we hit them from the side, we make them move, and they wobble, but they stop again. To keep them going, we need to move the ring and watch what happens. Now, they're constantly moving because I'm supplying them with energy. Gravity is pulling them down and I'm giving them a little bit of energy because as the ring goes through, there's friction between the ring and those smaller little rings there that causes them to transfer some energy and they keep wobbling. So that's pretty cool. Kinetic energy, a little bit of friction, sound energy as well. All right, let's have a All right, mirror, mirror on the wall. Can you see the camera that's recording you? I don't know, but here's a mirror. And so mirror has light energy, the light energy from my lights is hitting the mirror, reflecting off. In fact, the light from my face is hitting my face, going to the mirror and reflecting off and I see my image. So that's light energy. Now light energy is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Let's write that down. Electromagnetic radiation. If we could draw the wave, this invisible wave, it would look something like this. We start off with very long waves. And they get very close together. And so this is called the electromagnetic spectrum. The waves start off very long and they get shorter, shorter, shorter and get incredibly short up here. They have more energy up here. So up here, you might have heard of terms such as X-rays, gamma rays. You might have heard something as ultraviolet. And then we have visible light. Now visible light, of course, you can see the wavelengths changing here, and we see this. Our eyes are designed so we can see this, and it's made up of different wavelengths. The longest of the wavelengths is red. Then we go orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet 
and then we have ultraviolet. So here's our different lights here. All right, I'll show you that in just a minute. But then we have other waves that go back behind there that we can't detect with our eyes and have longer wavelengths. So we have like microwaves. We have TV waves. Oh, I forgot one there, infrared. So infrared is right there, right? It's just next to the red region there, infrared. We can't see infrared, but some animals can. Then we have microwaves, then we have TV waves, etc., and radio. So we have lots of different waves that are part of this thing called the electromagnetic spectrum and light's just one of them. So here's my light here. If I do this, it's like a magic light. Here we go, ready? Oi! It's like looking into an alternate dimension. It's called an infinity mirror. It looks like it goes on forever. And that's just a bit of a trick about how light behaves and reflects. Pretty cool. All right, let's check out another energy source. Okay, I'm a little bit darker now. I've turned the lights off because I want to show you this really cool type of uh, effect here. I've got a tile here, and this tile has a bit of paint pigment on it. And this paint pigment absorbs energy. When it absorbs energy, it then releases that energy again as light. And so let's have a look. I've got a little UV light here. Let's see if it works. Okay, you have to try and keep it dark. I'm going to hit it with the UV. Paint's going to absorb the energy of the UV, and then it's going to release that energy again as visible light that you see. All right, let's give this a go. Here we are. Hopefully you saw that. I just drew a spiral. Pretty cool. All right, let's try that again. This time I've got a series of different color lights. So here I've got a yellow light. And, I'm, and the, the visible light that you see, yellow light, is quite bright to the eyes. But I wonder what happens to the paint. So let's have a look and see if we can notice we can draw anything with yellow light. Here we go. Hmm, interesting. Yellow light does not make the paint pigment show up, whereas the ultraviolet light did. Let's try another one. Let's try and use green. So yellow didn't work. I wonder if green works. Here we go. Just barely, just barely green works. What about blue? Let's try that again. Blue light. Ah, blue works a lot better. So it seems that as we go up here, that the yellow didn't work, green just barely worked, blue worked, and we know ultraviolet. And that's a perfect way to show you that as you move along this way, along this wave here, that they have different energies. More energy up here, less energy. So yellow didn't have enough energy to make this paint pigment glow. Green just was on the edge. Blue did, and ultraviolet did very easily. Let's do ultraviolet again. Look at that, okay? So, pretty cool with energy and our little spectrum here. Make sure you draw that down and write down what we just learned about the wave as it gets shorter, has more energy, and how the light works. Let's check out another energy and turn this light back on. Let's check out this, this uh, film here. I've got a special type of film. If I put my hand here, let's see, let's see what happens. Remember, we are warm-blooded, and I've got my hand on this film, this crystalline film. If I move my hand now, you can see a hand shape. And so that is telling me that I have a certain temperature that's different to the environment here. Now, it's quite warm in this room at the moment, so the rest of it's going um, like a very light color, whereas my hand was making it go a blue color. So we can get color changes. Thermal energy is what we're talking about here. Those crystals change color based on thermal energy. What other energy sources are? Well, I can't do this next one because I'd have to have a nuclear reactor. Nuclear energy has stored potential energy. What about food? Well, the food that you ate for lunch or dinner has stored chemical energy in there. So we have thermal energy, heat, heat energy. We have electromagnetic radiation we just came across. We have um, gravitational potential energy, sound energy. One that we haven't done, actually, is electrical energy in terms of static electricity. We've done light, and that light was generated by a light bulb. That's electricity. But, of course, the good old rub the balloon on your hair, make your hair stand up, 
that's static electricity. So there's lots of different forms of electricity. I hope that made sense to you and you got them all down and you've recorded your notes because I know that in my class anyway, we'll have to explore all of these in a hands-on way and I'll see you in the next video where we learn more about different types of energy, potential and kinetic. See you then.